Hello, Becky Duff here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I have spent the last like three minutes getting that little tiny bear to sit up and not fall over and he's just not cooperating. A couple of years ago my daughters bought me this for my birthday from the convenience store. I gave them my debit card to like run in and grab like a slurpee or something and they came up with this because my birthday is at the end of November so Christmas stuff is already out and I don't know what they spent on it but it's cute. And since they spent my money on it for my birthday, I tried to display him. And this is from our big box office bookstore chapters. If you spent so much money, you got this bear, I think for free or for like 25 bucks or something. I can't remember. So me and my daughters grabbed a couple of books. They had like a kid's sale or something, but her name is Paige. That's the name she came with. Anyways, welcome back to my channel. I am here to talk about bookish goals for 2024. So I don't have a whole ton of goals. I don't try to bog myself down with like the top 10 goals of 2024 or the 24 goals or whatever. I am just here to talk about some of the things I am hoping to get out of reading in the new year. So for me, if you have been watching my end of year content with like the worst books of the year and my DNFs and stuff, I've been talking about how I've been having a hard time remembering the books that I've read and comprehending things. And I talked about in my best books of 2023, reading Hood Feminism. And it took me from March till midway through December to finish that book. Because, well, first of all, I was just putting it aside. Not that it wasn't a great book. I was just putting it to the side to read other things like novels. But also it had a lot of conversations in it that I'm not having in my everyday life and there was conversations about people names and stuff that I did not know so I felt like I had to sit there and read the book with like Wikipedia open and a dictionary open and just googling who these people were what these words meant things like that I thought the book was excellent and is a great read and everyone should pick it up and read it but it was a lot of brain power for me to read that book and that's one of the reasons why I kept putting it off and I think it's written in a very accessible way it's just me mentally I am having a hard time with everything in my life right now so I think part of it is just being a mom to four kids and I am almost two years postpartum so my baby will be two on January 26 and my other kids are 8 10 and 12 in the new year so I've been a mom for 12 years almost my first three kids were like two years apart. They were all 22 months apart. And that's a lot. And you're just kind of in this busy, crazy, chaotic stage and becoming a mom. I never went through like postpartum depression or anything, but just postpartum, your hormones are all over the place. It's just a crazy time in your life. And then I had like a six year gap and I still felt a little crazy and things were going insane. But then we had another baby. So, you know, you're going through the hormones and craziness of pregnancy and then postpartum and all of that stuff. There's that. And then I have a really bad bad diet. I am not feeding myself properly and so that is a goal for 2024 as well just to nourish my body in a way that makes me feel good and a lot of people talk about weight loss and stuff and I'll be honest with you I do want to lose some weight but I also want to focus not on like a certain diet that's just gonna burn all the calories and I'm gonna lose all this weight and look amazing. You don't have to be skinny and lose weight to look amazing. Let me put that out there but I want a diet that makes me feel amazing. I have a lot of digestive issues and health problems related to what I'm eating and what I'm putting in my body. So my husband is watching the baby upstairs and I don't know what he's screaming about but hopefully he settles down. He's okay. Anyways, I want to feed my body with food that is making me feel good and is good for my digestion and my health overall. That will naturally lead to weight loss but I don't want the goal to be weight loss. I want that to be like a bonus on top of just eating healthy. But anyways, this video is not about personal goals. It was about reading goals. But part of that is eating healthy and just taking care of my mental health. And that includes eating healthy and getting good sleep. I also have a book I want to read in 2024 about sleep, why we sleep, why it's important for us. So I really want to get to that in the new year as well. So my bookish goals are not to read X amount of books. I will have a number. I usually put it at 75. And this year I've read 90. I think by the 31st will be 93 books-ish. So I'm going to leave my goal again at 75 books books. Hopefully I will hit that goal. I think I will since I've hit 90 books in the past couple of years. My goals aren't so much a specific number of books but just slowing down and reading and enjoying the books that I want to read. On my bookshelves alone I have over 250 books that I have not read and I want to get to. So that will take years of me not picking up or buying any new books or getting anything from the library or anything like that. So I want to focus on reading the books that I already have on my shelves first and foremost. The buzzwords and stuff. 
I do the yearly buzzword challenge. I always try to find books. I don't always have them. Sometimes I just cannot find a book on my shelves or I don't like a book that I've picked up on my shelves. So I do go to the library or buy one if I find one that sounds interesting that I want to buy. But one of my major goals is just to read as much from my bookshelves as possible. The part that is hard with that is usually with the book clubs. I typically read for the Literally Dead Book Club from Kayla from Books and Lala. And I read for the book Troop, which is Gabby from Gabby Reads. So those are the two book clubs I usually follow the most. And I don't usually have those books on my bookshelves already. But for the buzzword and any other challenges, I am making my own reading journal for 2024. So I have downloaded and printed off a couple of different challenges for that as well so hopefully I will be able to get as many books from my bookshelves as possible. My goal is to read with more intention the books that I'm reading whether it is from my bookshelves or from the library or new releases or whatever. I want to do the Copile rating system that measures like on a scale of 1 to 10 the characters, the intrigue, the writing style, your overall enjoyment of the book, the plot, things like that. You have the different categories of what you rate out of 1 to 10 and then it will give you a star rating out of 5 overall. So I want to do that not for necessarily every single book I read in 2024 but for a majority of them. Say the buzzwords and the book club books I read at a minimum. I also want to try, I do love non-fiction books and I want to pick them up more and as a Christian I have so many non-fiction Christian books that have to do with faith and mothering, parenting, and I think I might have a couple marriage ones on there. So my goal this year is to hopefully pick up at least one Christian nonfiction book every month and then another nonfiction book, whether it is Christian or not, and then the buzzword books for the month and book club books that sound interesting to me. I don't have to read every book club book out there, but just the ones that sound interesting to me, I will pick up. And then whatever else I can fit in, I will fit in <laughs> kind of thing. So I want to be more intentional and I didn't write like a single review this year on my story graph or anything like that. So that is another goal of mine is to write reviews and I don't usually do star readings. It's just like vibes for me. I liked it or I didn't, but I do want to be able to do that, not to put pressure on myself to give a specific star rating, but to just really sit with the book more because I've read 90 books this year and I can tell you the plot of like four of them kind of thing. So I want to just sit with the book a little bit longer. Storygraph allows you to do like point ratings, not just like one, two, three, four stars. It allows you to do point ratings and I can do the cop pile and a lot of people go to Goodreads for reviews because it just has been around a lot longer and has a lot more users writing reviews and stuff. So I want to be a part of helping Storygraph have more reviews and star ratings and things on their platform. So that is a goal of mine to do the star ratings and the written reviews and then use the compile to help me with the ratings and reviews. So that is my goal just to be more intentional quality over quantity in my reading. So I can't think of what my other goals were. There were some other goals I had but just reading with intention not forcing myself to just read a whole bunch of books. I'm not really like who am I in competition with? Nobody. It's more just pressure I put on myself because I want to read all the books I own. I want to get to all the books. It's not about hitting a certain number every year. It's just about me wanting to read all the books. That's it. So there's no point in reading all the books if I don't remember any of them though. Those are my goals. <laughs> And trying to be more consistent with my content when I can. Picking a day to bulk film as much as I can bulk film and picking another day to edit as much as I can edit. And just being more consistent. I don't think I can be more consistent than one video a week. That's just where I'm at in my life right now. But just being consistent with that because some weeks I'll post nothing. I can go like two weeks without posting anything and then another time I have like four videos that all want to come out. So being more consistent with my content and Instagram, posting on Instagram, because I feel like so many people will take a picture and be like, oh, that's Instagram worthy kind of thing. Or they are trying to like part of their business, part of their brand, part of whatever is Instagram. So they are taking these professional photos, but that's not me. I'm not trying to build up like this crazy brand and sell things and make money on Instagram. So I just went on Instagram and Twitter to promote my channel and that was it. That's the only reason why I joined these social platforms. I was never on them for the longest time. I only went on Instagram and X back in 2019. So for me, just taking more pictures for Instagram and not worrying if it's not perfect, not worrying if it's not the best picture possible there, if it's Instagram worthy or not. I want to take pictures that are nice, 
but also just real life. This is my life. I have a messy house. I have four children. I have a dog and cats and it's crazy and it's busy and you get what you get. What you see is what you get kind of idea. But just giving myself permission to take the not so great photo and posting it to Instagram and being real with my posts on Instagram as well. Maybe posting on Instagram at least once a week. So those are my goals to just have better mental health and part of the mental health is not reading so many books. Like I just read a book and I end it and I pick up the next book and then I end it and I pick up the next book and I'm just constantly reading. So just kind of allowing there to be a breather in there and enjoying the books I'm reading and sitting with the books that I'm reading and DNFing the books that I just don't care about that are boring that are not working for me in this moment in time just dnfing it whatever it's fine i've really embraced the dnf since 2019 and i give you full permission to do that as well read books that you enjoy and are excited to be picking up and just reading my bookshelves that's my goal read my bookshelves what are your goals for 2024 how was 2023 for you did you read your reading goals for this year what are your goals for next year happy new year everybody and i will see you on the other side bye